In the preceding video my camera stopped very suddenly, I don't know why, and I was talking about this. How to find out the primary windings or perhaps the secondary windings of unknown uh, transformers. So put your ohms meter in the uh, multiply by one position, etc. And uh, I was talking about, say, this high voltage um, transformer. More info in the earlier video, and I will give the link. And I also told that I wanted to make this circuit, and I uh, also told that it uh, could be that high voltages are dangerous. And also read the text box about this uh, circuit not made for children, etc. etc. Or people with a pacemaker, etc. Uh, so that's what I wanted to tell. Uh, here again these three high voltage coils. I've talked about them in the earlier video. But now I want to go further with, say, the explanation uh, how to find out all the, say, unknown coils here. Uh, when you, say, f uh, buy this on a flea market, uh, it could be, uh, it could be it's more or less sure that you don't know how all these coils in the primary here are connected. So, uh, what I wanted to tell in the first video is that we have here a lot of electrodes. So, the first good idea is connect your crocodile clip of the ohms meter. Ohms meter here. I cannot show that uh, say together, but anyway, uh, connect your crocodile clip here to the first electrode and then measure with your um, ohms meter to all the electrodes that are on that primary coil. So here, and you can see for instance this. Measure it. Uh, uh, take very, very good care, and set your ohms meter to the uh, one position, and then look at the mirror scale. Of course, at first connect the both the wires of the ohm meter, and align it with the knob, the adjustment knob to exactly the point of zero and then go along all these uh, electrodes. So this one and that one and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here is ten. And when you have done that, uh, make notes. And for instance, when I did this I could see that when I say uh, measure the ohms resistance here, the DC resistance, and of course the AC resistance depends on the free on the frequency. So it's only a DC measurement, but it gives a kind of good ID. I measured here, for instance, zero ohms. I've made here the indication of a coil, but also could be a straight wire here. Perhaps one and two are connected. But I, uh, when I moved the uh, crocodile clip to pin electrode three, that's here, and did the measurements again, I found, for instance, that I had here on three between 3 and 4 a resistance of 0 0.8 ohms and that's of course difficult to measure on such a simple meter anyway 
But I found um, also when I measured further uh, between 4 and 5 also 0 0.8 ohms. So that's quite good. That means that uh, it is uh, more or less sure that we have here a coil of 0 0.8 ohms and here also 0 0.8 ohms. And when I measured further I found for instance between 5 and 6 uh, coil I found here by measuring all these points two coils of approximately 1.5 ohms and also here say from this central point uh, uh, 7 electrode 7 that's here um, um, two coils or even three coils. Well, the next question is of course how to use them in such a high voltage generator. And then if we look again at the circuit here. And this is the circuit. So we have here a primary and a secondary. That secondary is here. Say the a yellow coil like this and this. Uh, the tripler here in that circuit is uh, will be made with this. This is an old television tripler out of an old school TV set. You can also make that with say typical high voltage diodes. Must be typical high voltage diodes. Uh, normal diodes don't work good in such an application but that's say completely other issue. Uh, what I wanted to tell is say find out the best uh, primary um, coil to drive such a oscillator to its optimum. And these oscillators were made to work on, say, approximately 16 kilohertz. When you dive into, say, old school television technology, it's not it's not 16 kilohertz, but perhaps 16 point, uh, etc., etc. kilohertz. That's the line frequency of an old school analog TV set. Anyway, these transformers were made for that special purpose. And the good thing of such a transformer is that when you connect it in an oscillator circuit, uh, it will oscillate on its natural frequency. So that's good. And that it is, it's made to oscillate on its natural frequency, say 16 kilohertz or 16.5 kilohertz. Anyway. Uh, when you want to drive such an oscillator, uh, you have to say find out the coils that can. Uh, you have to find the tap somewhere. So this is a good idea. This could be here. Could be a tap. So the tap that's here in the circuit. Here's a tap. Or this. A uh, coil could also be used, and here is the tap. So here we have one. You have even three coils. So you have to find it out. This could be a tap. Uh, this could be connected, say, uh, to the collector of one of the driver transistors, and this could be connected to the collector of the other driver transistor that showed here. So this is the tab. Uh, the coil is <coughs> on one side connected to the double Darlington here with the collectors connected and the other side of the coil is connected to Say again another double Darlington with the uh, collectors that are connected. And say when you couple 
uh, the signal back, it will start to oscillate. Anyway, properly working circuit, etc. So this could be uh, this could be used as a tap, but you can also try to use this part of that coil. So here all these strange uh, electrodes, and it means that by uh, by measuring you can use this as a tap. So uh, that were say kind of considerations. I don't want uh, to say uh, go too deep because uh, these transformers, uh, high voltage transformers, on say 16 kilohertz, differ uh, both on their secondary. That's here. And on the on the primary windings, and when you study, say, uh, old school television sets, you can surely see that these windings are, say, often used in different ways. Anyway, uh, for hobby use and practical use, uh, it's a very good idea to measure it, and you surely can use such a old school uh, transformer, television transformer, for the line frequency as a high voltage generator for all kinds of purposes. It all takes some time And of course, such an oscillator circuit like this, uh, when you have find out the taps and find out where to um, say connect the collectors of the bows, the Darlingtons, it could be that it, even when you have soldered it together properly, it doesn't work. And the most important thing is this. Um, that these wi these uh, windings must be made properly. Could be, for instance, that you when you reverse this, it works. So uh, when this um, collector is connected to the lower part of the primary, and this is connected to the higher part of the primary, but on the other hand, um, could be that it also, say, directly works without any problems. And important, um, you can change this resistor to 15K, 15,000 ohms, this also to 15,000 ohms. Uh, you can uh, forget skip this potentiometer here. I've tested both circuits. That also depends on the use transformer. Uh, this is a capacitor say that damps all the 16 kilohertz oscillations so that they cannot travel on the power supply lead and here we have a resistor that say limits the current and when you of course a uh, shortcut that resistor the current will go up and the current of the whole circuit depends on say the complete setup so 16 kilohertz uh, and uh, that means that when you change the voltage and I've written here 15 volts to 18 volts. It can also work, say, on 6 volts or 9 volts. And um, the only aim, the only say ID is that it must work on its natural resonance frequency. And that's what this is all about.